heart. And for now, for sharing God's Word, ang ating preacher ay isang newbie. Bagong-bago po sa ating simbahan. Siya po ay mapagmahal. Hindi ko po masasabing single. <laughs> Take it na po. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. <laughs> And siya po ay ang ating currently district youth director sa ating Alliance Youth Metro Manila and our campus counselor. Let us welcome Pastor Olim Aki. And, ay, uy. <laughs> okay. uh, good morning, Impact Church. No, uh, Medyo kakaiba talaga yung feeling na nakatayo sa harapan ng pulpit. Dito ba daw ako? Ayan, dito daw dito ako nakatingin. Sige. <clears throat> Yun, medyo kakaiba yung feeling nung nakatayo sa harapan no, sa pulpit and mag-preach. No? Hindi ako sanay talaga eh. Um, yun nga, I'm one of the counselors ng Impact Church. no, So hindi ako sanay na nakikita ng maraming tao. But still, I am grateful for this opportunity. And for the past few weeks, no, we all have heard about love. Uh, the first Sunday, no, Uncle Rainer preached about the love of our Heavenly Father. DMS Samuel Carino talked about the disciplinary aspect of love. And Teacher Becca has discussed the two greatest commandments, to love God and to love others. And this morning, I'll be talking about a very famous parable. And I'm quite sure that majority of you guys here and yung nanonood knows about this story. Baha nga na pag-aralan na natin to sa Sunday school, no? even in your personal uh, time with the Lord. And this parable is the parable of the Good Samaritan. And this parable is found on the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 and 27, uh, to 37. And down, okay, down. Ayun, thank you. Thank you, Kuya Eko. And it says, no, in Luke, chapter 10, and behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to, he, he is desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Um, just to know, no, para alam niyo lang, ako yung taong mahilig magtanong ng bakit. Either sa utak ko or with other people. And napaisip rin ako sa passage na to. Why did the lawyer wanted to test the Lord. Why was he not satisfied with what, what Christ has pointed out? Why did he need to justify himself? In the first few verses, 
we can see that the lawyer has a malicious agenda. A malicious agenda towards Jesus Christ. Uh, and tulad nung last time, no, nung sabi natin, Becca, meron ring masamang balak yung lawyer. Pero tinignan ko yung harmony, no? mag-iba talaga, hindi sila parehas. Uh, different instances. So, nag-research ako, ano ba yung meaning nung neighbor sa context nila? And according sa Blue Letter Bible, no, the neighbor means uh, play Sion. Greek daw yan, play Sion. And sa context nung lawyer, niisip niya, a neighbor is someone who is a friend and or any other person where two are con- concerned, either fellow man or fellow neighbor. And syempre, for the Jews, any member of the Hebrew nation or the commonwealth. Uh, mga kasama nila sa bansa nila. Yun daw yung neighbor nila. With this definition, the lawyer was thinking that this is the perfect opportunity for him to test Jesus Christ and use the technicalities on their law to point out the flaws and maybe unlawful ministries that he perceives Jesus Christ was doing. Gusto niyang itest si Christ at i-point out yung mga sa tingin niya, yung mga maling ginagawa ni Christ sa ministry niya. And for sure, because Christ is a rabbi, then surely he must know the technicalities of their, their law. And if surely that their neighbors, that the lawyer thinks, are their friends, then surely they mustn't love their enemies or anything that is unclean, especially the tax collectors, the prostitutes, Gentiles, at lalong lalo na ang Samaritans. And kung friends, colleagues, and people who see na lovable and clean lang ang mga neighbors nila or natin, then Jesus Christ and the people that Christ ministers, mingles with, are not worth the effort of loving since it is in their law. And if Christ answers the question of the lawyer with another technical definition, based on their norms and culture, then surely he will, he will marginalize and offend those people he is ministering to. The lawyer was scheming and wants to pressure Jesus Christ, but Christ himself didn't answer the question. But it, he illustrated it, or he illustrated the answer in the form of a story to prove a point that the question, who is my neighbor, is not the right question. Let me repeat it. The question should not be, who is my neighbor? As we go on to the story, it says, Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by the other side as well. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, then set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. As we can see in the passage, there are four main characters in the story. Let's exclude the the robbers. Uh, The victim, the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan. And napaisip ako, bakit kaya sila yung ginamit ni Jesus Christ sa parable? Bakit merong priest? Bakit merong divite? At bakit merong Samaritan? So let us try to explore in depth kung bakit sila yung ginamit. First is the victim, no? The victim or the person traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And some scholar says that the road that the victim was traveling to was a very steep descent. So literally, mababa talaga siya from Jerusalem to Jericho. And because it is um, 
one of the major access points, no? uh, daanan, highway, kumbaga, uh, there are many caravans, merchants, and traders, traders who passes by that road. In short, because it is a major highway, it is filled with bandits and robbers. Excuse me, tumutunog yung laptop ko. <laughs> ko close ko na. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay, sorry. Ulit tayo, take two. Okay. <laughs> so, the, ra- the road that was the traveler was traveling to is a major highway. So, maraming merchants, maraming pilgrims na dumadaan doon from Jerusalem to Jericho and vice versa. So, isipin nyo na lang, parang daanan or uh, daanan sa, sa Divisoria. Maraming nagtatangka magnakaw at mga nang-hold up, lalo na pagkasagsaga ng Pasko or paggabi. Tinanong ko rin si Kuya Matt about this, no? Kasi laking Manila si Kuya Matt, eh. And sabi niya, meron daw talaga mga daanan sa Manila na tambayan ng mga magnanakaw. Yan. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Yan. So, ano siya? Uh, kuta? Tama ba yung word na yun? Kuta ng mga magnanakaw. So, most probably, no, the victim was a pilgrim, either a pilgrim or a merchant. And next, there is the priest, no? And who are the priests in the biblical times? In the Old Testament, the priest, the priest represented the people before God and God before people. Only those descended from Aaron can be priests, but tinanong ko si Kuya um, Gerald, no? Later on, even the Levites can be qualified as priests. Their duties also include inspecting, receiving sacrifices from the people, and overseeing daily activities and maintenance of the temple or the tabernacle. They're also responsible for any offense against the holiness of the tabernacle or violations of the rules of the priesthood. The Levites, on the other hand, are members of the tribe of Levi, and they assisted the priests Levites received tithes from the people, and this was their source of income. And for their compensation for the tabernacle, uh, they themselves give tithes. No? Sometimes they were the musicians, the gatekeepers, the guardians, the temple officials, the judges, and craftsmen of the tabernacle or the, the temple. So it is safe to say, so context natin ngayon, that the priests before and the Levites are the teachers. Maybe the pastors, even the deacons and deaconesses, minus the hundreds of rules of the Old Testaments imposed on the priests and the Israelites. So again, I ask myself, why did God use these men as an example? And why did they not help or even interacted with the victim? Is it because of just mere avoidance, mere apathy towards the people? Or is there something else? Sa Tagalog, bakit kaya iniwan or iniwasan ng priest at Levite yung taong ninakawan? Dahil nga ba wala silang pake? Dahil ba manhid rin sila? Dahil nga ba mataas ang tingin nila sa sarili nila kaya walang kwenta yung mga nahihirapan? Basta sinabi sa passage, umiwas lang sila sa kabilang kalsada. Sa unang tingin, marahil naisip nyo na masama naman ng priest at ng Levite para umiwas sa taong nangailangan. Pero baka, meron ngang rason. I remember last week, uh, Ate Becca, or Teacher Becca, uh, said that the Jews, especially the priests, have rules and regulations that they had to follow. And some experts believe that there were about 613 laws that the Israelites are following. And for this very particular story, there is one law that the priests had to follow, and it can be found in Numbers 19. And this law pertains to the purification of the priests. 
So it says in Numbers 19, verse 11, whoever touches the dead body of any person shall be unclean for seven days. He shall cleanse himself with water on the third day and on the seventh day, and so be clean. But if he does not cleanse himself on the third day and on the seventh day, he will not become clean. Whoever touches a dead person, the body of anyone who has died and does not cleanse himself defiles the tabernacle of the Lord. And that shall be cut off from Israel. Because the water for, for impurity was not thrown on him, he shall be unclean. His uncleanliness is still on him. The priest and maybe the Levite forbade themselves to draw near to the injured, the half-dead traveler, because it will make them unclean based on the law that was passed to them in the Old Testament. If they have touched and helped the victim, they have to cleanse themselves for seven days. And in return, they cannot continue to serve inside the temple. They will be sacrificing their privilege that they have in the temple. So maybe the reason of them avoiding the victim what no, is not just mere apathy. But the law they choose to obey first that may in turn make themselves the way they are and maybe in future interactions with similar cases may cause them to, uh, to be apathetic because they are looking out for themselves. Maybe it is for convenience sake Convenience not to consecrate themselves for seven days, not to set aside their ministry because of something that will make things harder for their lives. Inuna nila yung law kaysa love. Inuna nila yung law kaysa pagtulong. And now, let us look at the last character in the parable, the Samaritan and what he has done. It says, but a Samaritan, as he journeyed, come to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set on him his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, take care. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. With which, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Next one. Um, in the biblical times, the Samaritans are the people from Samaria. They were part Jewish, part Gentile. It came to be, naging ganun sila, no? Because of their intermarriages of the Israelites due, their, due to the captivity of the northern kingdom under Assyria. The ones left behind in the northern kingdom intermarried with the Assyrians. Thus, these people were neither fully Hebrew nor fully Gentile. The Samaritan also had their own copy of the first five books of the Bible and a very, as well as a very unique system of worship. And because of their lineage, their history, the Jews thought that Samaritans were unclean. They, and they have to avoid defilement by not interacting with them. Jesus Christ used the Samaritan as a contrast to the priest and the Levite, a person Despised by their own kind? Hini, uh, is, ano tagal ng despised? Kinamumuhian ng mga Hudyo. Yan. Uh, a person not in position or power. A person considered unclean by many. A person that ha they have no dealings with. The person they least expect. And certainly, the person they do not consider as a neighbor. In the story, the Samaritan did not just took notice of the injured victim. He treated the wounds, poured wine and oil. Nabasok yung wine and oil daw, parang antibiotic nila noong unang panahon. Tama ba yun? yun. So, lagi silang may daladala, parang alcohol. Daw. And gave two denarii 
to the innkeeper to take care of the person. Far different from the reaction of the priest and the Levite who ignored their fellow Jew, their neighbor, in the time that he needed them the most. I cannot imagine how Jesus Christ told this parable to the lawyer and in front of the crowd. Kung sa time natin yan ginawa ngayon, at kunento ni Jesus Christ, baka nag-mic drop pa siya nung kunento niya to. And for sure, during their time, it was somewhat controversial. Christ using a Samaritan as an example, not their own kind. And funny how it is how Christ answered the question, who our neighbors should be. For Christ, a neighbor For Christ pointed out that the question should not be, who is my neighbor, but am I a good neighbor? For Christ knows that our neighbor is any person, irrespective of religion, irrespective of nation, gender, or whatever background you have, is a person whom we live, whom we interact with, and whom we have a chance to meet. It is far more important and far more difficult to be a good neighbor in our lifetime than knowing who is our neighbor. Again, the question should not be, who is my neighbor, but am I a good neighbor? So, maybe the question shouldn't be, who is my neighbor, but am I a good neighbor? Like Christ, wherever his feet takes him, It is an opportunity for him not just to be a passerby, but an opportunity for him to be a good neighbor. A good neighbor is not to select or to... Being a good neighbor does not mean you interact with just clean people. Actually, kabaliktaran ba nga eh? Like the Samaritan who helps, who provides, and he cared for the one who is injured. So I ask myself again, what does it mean to be a good neighbor? Or what does it mean when I love others? What is love per se? So first is that based on the passage, loving others will have its challenges. Loving is difficult. It is easy to love the lovable, the people that even the lawyer thought who are their neighbors. It, it is easy to love the people with our same belief, same religion, same culture. But when we meet people who seems too different from our own self of, uh, with too different from our own set of belief system and lifestyle, it is hard to connect with them. And our natural reaction and interaction with them will be apathy. For the opposite of love is not hatred, but apathy. But being a good neighbor does not look at the race, the color, the background of the person, even the gender. Like the good Samaritan, his biases didn't hold him from showing compassion and mercy to the victim. His love superseded the laws that governs their society. Mas inuna niya ang kaligtasan at kalagayan ng taong taong nakita niya kaysa sa mga norms ng society nila. And love at times requires us to sacrifice what we have. It requires us to see others on the same level as we are. And with that, the people around us requires the same love that we give to ourselves. Look at the story. The Samaritan didn't just dress the wounds, but he even spent two denaries. And sa pagkakalang ko, ang context ng denaries, uh, daily wage. Tama, no? A denarii is a day's wages. But sa totoo lang, no, ang, de- ang minimum ngayon is 537, no? Tama, no? Pero on average, no, tininan ko, it's around 1,000 na rin, eh, no? Parang 1,000 ang normal or average sweldo ng tao ngayon sa context natin. Di ba? 750? <laughs> ah, 750 na lang para gitna. 500, 1,000, 750. <laughs> Ay, Sorry. Yan. So, sa totoo lang, no, tayo, no, when we, we are so frugal with our money, no, 
um, sa totoo lang, nagtitipid tayo until umabot tayo sa next sahod. No? So, dati ginagawa ko, uh, 7-11 lang. <laughs> Nag-aaral pa ako sa ages, 7-11 lang. No? At as much as possible, 50 lang magastos ko bawat lunch. No? So, kakain lang ako ng hot dog, sandwich, tapos yakult. Okay na yon. <laughs> so, ilang delata, kakainin natin, or ilang pansit kanto nang lulutuin natin no? para makatawid lang tayo. Minsan, no, uh, para makatipid talaga, Di na tayo nagka-tricycle, di na tayo nagbabas. Na-try ko yun eh. Naglakad na lang ako pa uwi. Kasi wala na talaga akong laman eh. Parang walang laman yung wallet ko, nilakad ko na lang yung Star Mall hanggang South Mall. So it's about 5 kilometers. Dati yun, nung payat ako. Ngayon, hindi ko na kaya yun. <laughs> Ngayon, ano na lang. Papunta kina KR na lang kaya, no? Ganun na lang. And, syempre, sa iyo mga estudyante rin dito, alam ko, ginawa nyo na rin to eh. Um, hindi kayo gagastos ng lunch. or maglalakad kayo pa uwi, basta may pang computer. Tama. <laughs> Kahit 20 lang, no? puhunan lang, 20, it's pustahan. No? <laughs> so, context ng ano, here. Hindi ko sasabi, gawin nyo yun na, masama yun. <laughs> Pero back to the topic, no? Uh, indeed, that loving others, loving our neighbors, isn't easy. That is why we are reminded in Hebrews 13, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And even in Ephesians 4.2, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love. Next is that love, loving others, it requires action. Love isn't lip service. Hindi lang pwedeng sabihin mo, I love you, yun na yun. <laughs> you cannot say that you love someone, yet there is no effort in it. Like the Samaritan. No? Nakatawa isipin, no? kung lip service lang love, tinanong niya lang yung victim, Oy bro, okay ka lang. Tapos mag thumbs up, alis na siya. Kung sa love language nga, hindi lang pwede... Puro words of affirmation lang. But syempre, kailangan rin merong acts of service, quality time, minsan may receiving gifts, and even uh, holy physical touch, and godly physical touch. Whole package, kumbaga. The problem with just words is that sometimes we say things that during that time we meant it, we mean it. But as time passes by, the intention of loving and helping diminishes until it is all gone. It is true that lo- that action speaks louder than words. There are far too many people who promised things, whether about love or promised about a changed life, promise about helping others, but in the end, it falls short because of the lack of initiative to start making changes. And the Bible reminded, reminded us in 1 John 3, 17-18, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God love abides in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. And next is that love should be expressed fully. There is no such thing as half-baked love. For it is not love at all. Imagine if our Heavenly Father didn't love us fully. What kind of life or what kind of hope are we expecting? If He didn't love us fully, then He wouldn't send His Son to die for us and to save us. If the love of the Father to us is complete, even though that we don't deserve that kind of love, then shouldn't be we also give that love to our neighbors? Yes, you might think that si Lord, iba si Lord eh, Lord yan. Kaya 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 niya gawin yun. But regardless, we have the capacity to love to a certain extent, even laying our own lives for God and for others, like what He did for us. Can you call love if it has reservations? Can you call it love when you want something in return? Can you call it love 
when you want it to be reciprocated? Can you call it love when you don't express it at all? Can you call it love when you don't exert effort? All I know that when God loves, He doesn't hold back. And I ask myself, no, kung dami ko kasi tanong sa sarili ko, eh, no? kanina, what, who, ngayon, why? Tingnan natin, bakit, why do we need to be a good neighbor? As we learned, no, what loving others may cost us, but why should we love others? Bakit natin kailangan malin ang ibang tao? First, because it is a commandment. It says that you shall love the Lord your God and love others or love your neighbors as yourself. We are called to love God with everything that we got, everything that we got, and to love others equally on how we love ourselves. It summarizes the Ten Commandments, sabi nga ati Beke, eh, nung last Sunday, that was passed down by God to Moses on Mount Sinai to honor our parents, to preserve life, to be faithful in our relationships, to respect the properties of others, to be truthful and to be a good witness to others. God gave us a duty to do these things to our neighbors for it is right. We have to maintain a good relationship. Next, Uy, putol, sorry. Uh, it is an evidence of God's goodness in our lives. Question, how good God is in your life? How loving and patient is he to you? We can only love others because he first loved us. He loves because he himself is love, the very definition of love. Because of Christ and his love, we became new creatures, new creation, being transformed daily, dependent on his mercies every morning. To love others means that we have the capacity to love because God filled us with his love. And because of this, this love, it is an outburst. No? Hindi natin kayang pigilan ang pagmamahal. Umaapaw ang pagmamahal ni Lord. At ito ang evidence na napakabuti niya sa atin. And last, it, is, it, points, it points our neighbors towards Christ. No? We have to love others, be a good neighbors, because sa atin, sa buhay natin, doon nila makita ang kapangyarihan ni Christ. The greatest testimony we can share to others is on how we live our lives, our changed lives. What more is, what is more convincing than living our lives the way Jesus did, loving like he did? If Christ can transform us from who we were to who we are right now, and we know within ourselves how unlovable we can be, then there is hope for everyone. There is hope in Him. As long as people long for love, our lives can show the only love that truly satisfies, the love of our Father. And as we have answered the what's and the why's of our, na- of our loving our neighbors, let us move to the last question. How can I be a good neighbor? You know, to be a good neighbor, on 1 Corinthians 13, no? in love verse, no? we have to be patient. Uh, we have to be forbearing and patient to the progress of other people. Uh, we have to be respectful, to be not controlling, and allowing the person to grow, to be humble, selfless, forgiving, to be protecting, trusting, hoping, and preserving. There are many ways we can show our love. There are many ways, uniquely to you, na ikaw lang kaya may that you can show your love to others. Um, but let me show, uh, let me tell you my story, my personal story about loving others. Uh, doon sa mga hindi nakakaalam, no? Parang uh, basis malito. <laughs> and, uh, Yun, uh, yung back 2008, no, um, namatay yung mom ko due to cancer. And my father was an OFW. And so when, when she died, no, our father promised 
to, to us siblings na nandyan siya. No? He will uh, do everything that he has to do for us. Kaya syempre, nakasama namin mom namin for for many years and yung father namin umuwi lang every now and then, mga twice a year lang. So syempre, ginhawa sa amin yun. No? Ginhawa sa amin. Okay, nawala yung mom namin. Pero our father um, will try to put effort in being there for us. Um, but sad to say, no, uh, I think back 2012, when I was studying, uh, doon namin nalaman na may plan na pala magpakasal tatay namin. Without us knowing kung sino yung babae. Uh, namit ko lang yung babae nung kasal na sila. <laughs> And it was very hard for me, no. Uh, all those broken promises, um, plans for a better future ng pamilya, nawala. Uh, he decided to move on from us. No? Kasi siyempre, ang sakit nun eh. Uh, ayaw namin patay rin sila sa bahay, so patayo sila ibang bahay sa ibang lugar. But it was very difficult, no? From, from hatred, no? I really hated my father. And it turns to, it turned to apathy. Wala nang pake. Sige, go on. It's your life. Uh, putulin na natin to. But because of uh, very few people, no? who helped me, fostered me into their family, into their life, and introduced, reintroduced Christ. No? It dawned to me what family means. No? Doon ko naramdaman yung pagmamahal, doon ko naramdaman yung acceptance, and doon ko naramdaman yung essence ng pamilya. Uh, it, it was Pastor Ralph, no? sa PVGC, <laughs> who helped me to get through those rough times no and i've realized no that for me to grow and to move on with life i have to love my father <laughs> and uh naramdaman ko na eh yan, thank you thank you yan sige i have to love my father i have to reconcile Anong klaseng testimony yun? No, aral ako AJS. If I cannot forgive someone who have hurted me, what kind of testimony? Kung ako nga, ang dami kong maling ginawa sa buhay, pinatawad ako ni Lord. Bakit? Hindi ko pwedeng kaya ang tuwa. Take three! <laughs> Namay tubig po ako, thank you. Bakit hindi ko kayang patawarin tatay ko? And don't to me, no. If I deserve that kind of love, I should also give that kind of love. <laughs> so being a good neighbor is not about the technicalities of life. It's not about who is right, who is wrong. But it's about loving. Loving like the Father have loved us. Remember that we need to ask God to help us become good neighbors. Believe it or not, sometimes we too are priests and Levites in other people. Unconsciously or consciously, we don't treat people equally and we never will because of our biases. The way we're brought up affects how we interact with other people, even our own set of beliefs. But it shouldn't be a reason for us not to strive to become a good neighbor. Of course, by our own strength, we cannot. We will always fall short on loving. We will hurt people. We may become an enemy to others. But we must ask God for a discerning and humble heart to become good neighbors, a good witness of Christ. So as I end, no, let me just repeat, the question should not be, sino ba ang kapitbahay ko? Sino ba dapat ang kaibigan ko? But am I a good neighbor? Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for your love, that love that we don't deserve but you truly and freely give to us. Lord, we just pray that that kind of love 
Sana mas i-share namin sa mga taong makasama namin, mga neighbors namin sa buhay namin. For them to know how great and awesome your love is. So Lord, help us because in our own strength, we cannot help us to live like you live. Help us to see these people like how you see them. So Lord, we are so thankful for that love. And as our response, may we spread that love to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Pastor Olin, for reminding us about God's love and we should look at ourselves. Are we a good neighbor? And with and as response, let us sing of this song again, uh, declaring that God's love is great.
let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our dear God and Heavenly Father created everything on earth. We adore you and we praise you and honor you for who you are, Panginoon. To this day, we'd like to thank you for your abundant blessing to each one of us. Thank you for the word that was preached today by Pastor Oli. And our responsibility, Lord, is to make your word alive in us. We pray that what we learn today is something that we will act upon every single day of our life. As we grow in knowledge and in wisdom in you. Lord, we thank you dahil uh, nakalabas na po, madi-discharge na po si, si Ate Donna from the hospital. Thank you for your favor, for your healing and your provision para sa kanila. We continue to pray for ang uh, panganay na anak ni Kuya Louie na nagbabattle pa rin sa sakit na leukemia. Ikaw po ang patuloy na tumulong sa kanila. We continue to pray for uh, Rochelle na merong uh, nayaramdam sa kanyang uh, uh, likod, Lord. Uh, patuloy mo siyang tulungan at uh, biglang uh, bigyan ng uh, kaginawaan at solusyon sa kanilang uh, problema na ito. Uh, may you continue to give healing sa aming mga kapatiran na nangihina, medyo masama ang pakinamdam, at uh, patuloy na ilayo kami sa anumang uh, karamdaman, sakit, lalong-lalo na sa COVID-19. We pray, Lord, that you just pour out your blessings upon us and we ask that you give us wisdom for everyday decisions that we make for your glory. And now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory in great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Church, have a blessed, blessed week.